I think everyone uh, uh, knows John Rose, uh, and we've had him here in the past uh, in a different capacity, uh, but now John is coming to us. Uh, uh, don't want to mess up the name. Uh, it's sort of a long, uh, but Northeast Tennessee hub. So, uh, but John has a passion for building. As executive director of Northeast Tennessee Hub, John helps build relationships that create win-win opportunities for businesses and communities in our region. Uh, John was raised in Southwest Virginia and graduated from Tusculum University uh, back when it was still Tusculum College. So uh, I can relate with that uh, uh, now with King College and King University as well. So um, before he became a Tennessee certified economic developer, uh, John Gears is construction project manager, small business owner, and Kingsport economic development director taught him not only the boots on the ground mechanics of building for businesses, they fostered him a desire to always work toward long, the, the long-term success of all involved. And I think uh, John uh, cut his teeth with Mr. Davis, uh, who's a guest today, so uh, got, glad to have you here. Uh, today, John is driven by the, the desire to leave things better than he found them. Because of that, he is passionate about relating to the next generation and helping that generation see the benefits of living, working, and raising families here. With that, John, table's yours. Thank you, Matt. We get situated here. I believe I'm going to hold this. Can everybody hear me in the back? Good. Uh, it, it is my Pat. <laughs> he told me he was not leaving because it was me, but uh, I don't believe him. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll take up with uh, that yesterday uh, or tomorrow or whenever. But uh, for those of you who thought that you were getting the person that was a Trump delegate on your uh, ballot when you voted for delegates earlier this week, that was not me. I got so many texts saying, hey, we voted for you. And I'm like, no. <laughs> No, you didn't. So if that's who you came to see, uh, wrong John. That has to be a great guy, great name. Uh, also, I know they recognize uh, our team members here with us today, but uh, as I go through this presentation, you'll see that I truly uh, believe in uh, what we're doing and how we're doing it. Uh, this presentation is not just a presentation of John's uh, development. It's the entire team. Everybody played a big role in it. And, uh, we're very passionate that we uh, present the hub uh, in a professional uh, and beneficial way to uh, everybody in the community. I want to thank uh, a lot of people. I didn't know everybody that was going to be in the room today, but uh, since Brent brought up some things, I'm, I'm going to thank, yeah, you know, I appreciate uh, Mayor Scholl and Mayor Grandy for being here. They're on my board. That's greatly appreciated. But as we go through this, we get nowhere without the help of others. I really believe that, and I'm going to give you two examples today. I come home from work uh, about 7, 6.30, 7.30 at night uh, in 2009, early 2010, actually, and my wife's on the phone. Yes, he can come for a job interview next week. Yes, he can come on Wednesday. I'm like, who's on the phone? Way me off. Well, it was Vic Davis. He was on the phone talking to my wife. And Vic hired me at La Coretta in Colonial Heights. And what he didn't know at that time, what I sure didn't know, is the skills I learned on the civil side and on site development and relationships with every municipality in the region gave me an opportunity to do the job I'm doing today. So Vic, thank you for that. I, I truly mean that. And then another person called me on my 30th day after leaving the city, city manager Chris McCart. And I'm at supper, and I was like, well, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll take his call. And I stepped out on the back porch, and he goes, your warranty has expired. 30 days, and that's it. So, uh, but uh, I do want to, and I've told Chris this personally uh, multiple times, the opportunity that he gave me and what the, the city of Kingsport gave me uh, is very meaningful to me, and uh, I'm very proud to have been part of the city for the years that I was. Uh, and we can't forget Stephen Bauer. I'm kidding. I'm not going to embarrass you, Stephen. He, he was nervous about that. But when I, pre when I present to different groups, I like to get a thought process of how do I get the message across to where they know that I truly believe in what I'm saying. 
So I went back and looked at some quotes that have meant a lot to me, and they're personal to me. Uh, my high school basketball coach, my grandmother, who was four years old when your club was chartered, by the way, so she, she's 104 next month, uh, and then uh, my daughter. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to share the three quotes. My high school basketball coach said, treat the water boy exactly like you treat your star athlete. And he lived that. Uh, and that has helped me make decisions in my life professionally, raising my children, coaching basketball for 25 years as a volunteer. Uh, I would add one more line to that. Treat the kid you cut exactly like the kid on your basketball team because they need to make a living. They're going to make a difference. Uh, and uh, uh, treat people right is, is, and I'll never forget the words that Coach Bell instilled in me, we'll say 40 some years ago. And then my grandmother gave this quote when my aunt wrote her biography when she was 94, so 10 years ago. Every day that we wake up and look forward to learning or doing something new and not being hindered by the disappointments of our past, is a good way to live. I'll say it's the way we were meant to live. And I like, and so I had a grandmother that really inspired me, and I use her examples all the time. I use an example the last time I spoke. But then the good one is my daughter. My wife gave me a Christmas present this year, and it was a hundred individual handwritten notes and little bitty capsules rolled up like a scroll. And I can open them up, and I get a nice note from my wife telling me how much she loves me, and what our marriage means to each other. But my daughter said, Dad, I filled one of those out. When you get it, let me know that you know it's me. So the second day on the job, I open up a note, and it said, don't screw it up. <laughs> it's the truth. They heard me laughing. That is the God's honest truth. That is the note. So I text my daughter and said, sweetie, I got the message. So... Uh, uh, that uh, I think those three quotes will lead well into this presentation, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, you get something out of them because they have meant life-changing things to me. Hub gets asked a lot of questions, a lot of questions about what we do, what we're going to do, what we have done, and what path we're on. We're going to try to touch on some of those today and do our best that you leave here informed uh, and uh, to see what direction that uh, we're, we're heading. Uh, the, Two of the questions that we get asked is, why does industry and why does the hub care about what happens in my city, town, my neighborhood, my community, my county? And then, what is the hub's role? That's the questions, the top three questions we get asked on a frequent basis. Well, why does private industry care? I'm not going to read every slide. We're, we're very capable of that. But everything you know, hinges around workforce now, new housing. New housing attracts population. Population attracts more retail, commercial, and industrial opportunities for everybody around the region. So that is, uh, that's why it's important to our, uh, our funding partners that, yes, they may be lo located in Kingsport, Johnson City, Bristol, uh, and only in, in uh, different counties around the region, but they are very interested in what happens in every community in our region. We're going to celebrate and look and sell the strengths of our community. We have great education. We have great quality of life. We have great business ecosystem here. Uh, we have a, we're business friendly. We have a diverse manufacturing base. Sometimes we can be our own worst enemy when we start criticizing ourselves. But when we have visitors, I love bringing people to this area that's never been here before. Family members or uh, you know, uh, fr friends of family or, or somebody like a, a new... Uh, brother-in-law, uh, sister-in-law, stuff like that. They've never been here. They're blown away. We ho when I was with Kingsport, we hosted a group of developers from Memphis, uh, uh, Chicago, Washington, D.C. They could not, their quote about Kingsport and then the other areas in the region, they cannot believe the quality of life and the education systems that's in this area, and they had never been here before. Uh, so people from outside this region see how good of a place we have to live and work. Uh, and uh, raise our families. This here, don't worry, it's not going to be a negative presentation on any manner because remember my daughter told me not to screw it up, so we're going to stay with that. This is some quotes that were given about our region in past research, past uh, studies. The top one 
was from a group outside of our region. And they said, if we could get our act together, we would be unstoppable. You know, we can say that about every aspect of our life. But this is not, we're not going to avoid the elephant in the room that, yeah, we got ways to grow our communities, ways to uh, better our area. But we're not going to focus on this. Here's the things we're going to focus about. What does the hub care about what happens? It's not about the hub. Okay? It's about every community in this region. It's about the success of cities, counties, businesses, and schools. Uh, I'll give you an example. We were asked to sponsor something, and we could have got the hub's name on a, on a national trade show and said, look what we're doing. We chose not to do that. We said, we are the wrong uh, representative for that one. Let us sponsor the right one. So the hub wrote the sponsorship check for the correct person to represent our region uh, in a national trade show. That is how we're going to approach businesses. We don't have to be our name in the paper. We don't have to be number one. What we want to be is a supporting entity uh, to ensure the success of everyone. What is the hub doing to help? We've, we're working on a listening tour. You say, well, what does that mean? That means this is day 94 for me. Uh, so the extended warranty expired four days ago. And uh, we have met with right at 70 different organizations. When I say that, that could be a city manager, that could be a county mayor, city mayor, nonprofit organization, private business, higher education, you name it. We're on, on right at meeting number 70 because part of our plan is to develop a strategic plan that our board has approved and we are currently working. And it is important that before we go out and say, this is what we're going to do, is to listen and say, what do you need us to do? Where do you need us? Where can we bring value? Where can we support you uh, in your efforts? And so that's, we've met with every professional economic development director and group in the region already. So uh, we're very excited on the feedback and we'll talk about some of the feedback that we have gotten. This is an example of people we have met with. This is not to meant to be an all-inclusive list. I would have too many slides and uh, this is just an overlook of who we have met with in the last 90 days. This is just the logos. It's easier to read than just a list and this is not everybody but it's a lot of people that we have met with in the last 90 days to get feedback on how uh, our region uh, can work together with them to ensure uh, that uh, all uh, parties are successful. Here's, uh, I'd already mentioned the first example of how we're working together. The other thing, we've met with county mayors uh, in some of those meetings. Uh, they've said, hey, we have a TIF district and we'd like to have a hotel or hey, we have a piece of land that we would like to see a, a fast food franchise. Hey, we have a piece of land that we would like to see uh, developed commercially. And uh, what is exciting about the role uh, that we get to play is, oh, we know two hotel brokers that would love to come and look at your piece of property. Yeah, and they named a specific franchise. I said, we know someone that does franchises of that organization. Let us introduce you. Well, that is a win for everybody because economic development is not just a 200 job industry in an industrial park. In some of our small communities, uh, a, a restaurant uh, or a small strip center business that produces sales tax and improves the quality of life of its residents is just as important as the 50 or 100 job industrial project is to the whole region. Everybody has a different need and economic development, and you cannot approach every community, every county, every town in the exact same way. It has to be, where do you need, what do you need, and how can we help? Uh, so some of the things that we've had a very positive feedback on, our board has approved the expenditure on the, the top four items, is the feedback is, hey, we need help with research. Data is expensive, some softwares software, sorry, I'll get my grammar right tomorrow. Some software might cost as much as $20,000 a year or more. Uh, and that's expensive for every community you have to do. So we are in conjunction with our strategic plan partner that we'll talk about in just a few minutes. 
we are looking at getting these products and offering assistance and research with them free of charge to any business, nonprofit organization, or municipality in our region. It's been a very positive response from people. We actually have already got free phone calls and we're like, hey, we don't have them turned on yet. Uh, that's how positive the response has been on the need for this service to the entire region. So we'll help with the data research. Uh, we facilitated a meeting with a company looking at moving their headquarters to Northeast Tennessee. And we also have facilitated someone that's looking uh, at projects in Bristol, at the airport, in Kingsport, and in Hawkins County. You say, well, how are you going to be involved in that? We just so happen to get the call. And uh, uh, I'm going to put Stephen on the spot to say yes, you'll agree, is when we got that call, that local economic development director is the next call. That is their project. We're just here to help. Remember, we don't have to have our name on the front page of the paper. It's all about what community does this business want to be in and how can we get them introduced to the right people as fast as possible. The last one, we've helped a community that uh, needed help with their Main Street grant. And we have another county that's already asked us uh, in one of their cities to help with that also. It's a big deal. It helps them get other grants. Uh, I said grant, Main Street application. It helps them get grants and stuff to redevelop their downtown. So it's exciting to be part of that. Here is just a word cloud of, hey, what is economic development? Growth, advancement, sustainability, standard of living, all those are, are items that involve uh, things that we touch, things that we support, uh, and things that we work on. This is just, uh, I, this is an article and I absolutely love it. This comes from the census uh, uh, research and what it shows is travel patterns between where people in major cities work and where they live. And each color represents that that's the area they mostly stay in. So this article that was in the Washington Post took this census data and created a map that says if today the states were redrawn, this is what, based on economic impact, economic trends, here's what our map would look like today. And it's pretty crazy to see they took that and you're like, because it's not just one part of Tennessee, it's not just one part of Virginia, it's not just one part of North Carolina. We, uh, we, we're, we're bigger than just our individual selves. Uh, we, we are a region, we, we operate as a region, and a lot of that has to do with transportation routes, the Blue Ridge Mountains. Uh, if you notice that, that has, that still plays in factors today. So I found this very interesting is we, we operate and uh, uh, economies operate this way because it's convenient and because it's uh, uh, how things are set up. But, you know, how can we make that better? That's the purpose of this map. How can we help with it? Uh, you know, that was in my notes from yesterday. I was like, Somebody had something going on there. It looked exactly like the state of Franklin, really close. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's very, very uh, close to what it looked like. This is Younger Associates as our strategic plan partner. Younger Associates is very experienced. Part of our conversation with the board uh, early on was, hey, we want a strategic plan partner that just does economic development. We want them to be focused and have experience and what we need to do as a region. And so we hired them. We've already are working through our discovery phase. We're currently setting up one-on-ones and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. But this is an example of the counties uh, in the southeastern part of the United States that they have already done economic development work in. As you can see, that is Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, uh, Georgia, Alabama, uh, that they have focused uh, on the southern part of the United States, and we needed that experience. They also have developed uh, marketing programs for the state of Tennessee Economic Development Department. So it is a very good relationship for us to have uh, the uh, strong economic development strategic plan partner and younger associates. Right now, part of that plan, uh, the week of week of April eighth, we're going to be uh, uh, and we're currently scheduling roundtables. Uh, they will be in each of the three cities listed, and uh, we're inviting uh, business leaders, uh, nonprofit organizations, and uh, we have about 50 people right now today committed to attend these roundtables. We also are doing one-on-ones, uh, private one-on-ones. They'll be held at Northeast State. They'll be one-on-one -on -one with 
uh, a representative of our, of our strategic plan partner. And then those officials and businesses that can attend those dates, uh, we have numerous uh, uh, slots where we're going to schedule Zoom meetings for people that might not be able to make some of those dates. It's not convenient for their schedule, but we're, we're committed. So right now, we have right at 50 people scheduled for that. Based on return phone calls and stuff, we're going to be pushing 75 or 80 just on those three days, in addition to the online Zoom calls. Uh, and so we're really, really excited about that. And the response has been overwhelming. We want to be there. Thanks for the invite. And we're very excited uh, to have the response that we had on developing the strategic plan uh, for the region, not for the hub. This is my contact information. This is uh, my cell phone number. Uh, most people have it. Uh, if you need my card afterwards, I'll, I'll give you one. It has that on it also. And I do, uh, I know I said thank you a lot earlier, but this is the second uh, or third time I've been here, but it was the first time I spoke in Kingsport was the Kiwanis. And so today is the first time that I have publicly spoke on behalf of the hub. And it was an honor to be able to do that here again. And even on top of that, to be here on your anniversary date. So thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate your interest and be happy to answer any questions.